Okay, so why don't we get started while other folks join us. Um, welcome to the third session of the BITS Fall 2023 Research Transparency and Reproducibility Training Series. Um, I recognize some of the names and faces, but if this is your first session with us, uh, my name is Grace. I'm the program manager for the Berkeley Initiative for Transparency in the Social Sciences. Um, and BITS, what we do is we aim to improve the credibility of science by advancing transparency, reproducibility, rigor, and ethics in research. Um, this fall series has been generously supported by the Templeton World Charity Foundation. Um, and this is a unique condensed online version of our flagship training, which is typically held uh, over three days in person in Berkeley. Um, and I'm extremely excited to announce today's session, which is led by BITS's own assistant project scientist, Fernando Jose de La Guardia. Um, and it, it'll be on the intersection between data sharing and code um, and focus on version control best practices using GitHub. Um, so if you have any questions throughout, please feel free to interrupt or type your questions in the chat box and I can help relay them to Fernando. Um, I know I shared a little bit of pre-work just to download um, GitHub and sign up, but if you have done that and would like to follow along with the slides, um, I've just put them in the chat. Um, and we are recording this session, so we'll be able to share this with you afterwards. So if you miss anything or want to um, revisit it, you'll be able to do that. Um, so without further ado, I'll pass it over to Fernando to kick us off today. Thank you very much, Grace. <laughs> uh, and thank you very much, everybody, for, for joining us today. Um, let me let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, there you go. Um, let me remove some stuff here. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, as, as Grace said, Grace said that this is a, a, a modified version of our of our standard training on uh, version control and and Git and GitHub. Um, so. She, she already pointed to to this, but but the, this presentation it's roughly thirty minutes of exposition and one hour of hands on. So the first half hour, uh, I'll be talking briefly about um, the, the, uh, data sharing and and so like the the theory of Git and GitHub. Um, uh, but the, the 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 last hour it will be pretty hands on. So. Uh, Please make sure to have downloaded the GitHub desktop app, and and also create an account of GitHub.com uh, for the for the last hour. Um, also, uh, the, the the one important thing to mention is that this this tutorial uh, this version it's targeted primarily for people uh, who have uh, either never heard of Git or GitHub or they have heard of it and they have felt somewhat intimidated and and and. Uh, have not been able to move forward with it. This is a very sort of like user friendly version of it, and and even though the first half hour I will go pretty fast in in the exposition part, in the in the hands on section I will be go extremely slow. So please jump in, tell me what's going on with your with your uh, uh, with your session, and and I will help you troubleshoot what what is going on, and then that way we can all learn. Okay. So just as a motivation, the, the, the standard motivation is that we want to share the entire scholarly output. And the, the, the best uh, quote for this comes from this uh, researcher uh, who coined what's called the Clarable Principle, which is basically, let's stop thinking about the, the manuscript as the unit of scholarly output and make the, 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 the entire computational environment uh, the, the code, the data, the, the, the software that you need to run uh, the, the output that's generated that goes into a paper as the relevant scholarly output. Uh, that's that's an important shift in mindset. And and essential for that basically is to share data and code. Uh, and also, if, if you were at uh, session number one of this RT2, where Ted Miguel talked about the Mertonian norms, this basically this. Uh, Motivation is closely aligned with the idea of communality that we want to share knowledge in its entirety, um, and or also around organized skepticism because we, we we should not take the manuscript at face value. We should be able to uh, uh, test it and investigate it in depth. So for that, we need the data and the code. 
Uh, and also, I, as I was writing this, I, I thought it is also related to universalism because uh, in in a world where universalism is is the norm, we should not care so much about like who, uh, like we should not uh, so like take the, the the name of of the author who wrote the paper uh, to to uh, as a proxy of its validity. We should basically go ahead and test any claim somewhat uh, quickly. Uh, Okay, so uh, let's start with data sharing. So in terms of data sharing, uh, uh, and this, this is gonna draw primarily from, from economics, but happy to hear from other disciplines and, and see if this relates. Uh, but basically in the distant past, so, so like in the, when, when economics was starting to become empirical in the early 90s or late 80s, 1980s, uh, there were some efforts to test uh, reproducibility and uh, this, this entailed uh, to check whether or not data was available, uh, whether or not there were procedures to run the, 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 the analysis. And, and the conclusion early on was basically, rarely data was available. Before the early 2000s, then there was a, a change in policies in the early 2000s uh, that didn't have that much bite. And there was a big change later on in, in 2018 that has uh, uh, basically uh, increased the 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 uh, 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 tendency or the, the necessity of researchers to share data, but it's still not a hundred percent there yet. Um, there, there's there's a lot of space for improvement, but but there's even though uh, we're, we're coming from a even recent past where not much data was shared, uh, things are are getting better, and this is uh, well documented in a recent paper by um, Ferguson uh, et al where basically they ask uh, a sample of uh, around 700 researchers who have published in a top 10 journal in any social science uh, and ask them, uh, when was the first time that you did this open science practice from pre-registering, pre uh, posting your instruments or sharing data and the, the, the green line here will be sharing data. So we do see a, a gradual increase on, on how much people are sharing data. Um, so that's the past. In terms of the of the present, what's going on today with data sharing? I think, from my perspective, the most important thing is that funders uh, over the last decade have been so sort of like uh, aligning more and more behind solid requirements of data sharing. And the the latest milestone that uh, exemplifies this is the uh, the uh, Nelson memo from the Office of Science and Technology Policy from the White House. Um, that basically says by 2025, any research funded by by the government uh, has to basically has a, 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 a clear plan to release uh, their data and their code. And so th this is substantial. Uh, and also parallel to that, there has been a fantastic growth in terms of infrastructure uh, to where to deposit your data in trusted repositories, such that it can be shared with a unique identifier, a digital object identifier, so people can follow that uh, data versus a, a common common res resource, Zenodo to uh, Dryad <clears throat> for some larger data sets, uh, the Open Science Framework too, and, and in economics, the, the, there's, the top journals tend to require you to deposit your, your materials in the ICPSR. Um, I, I put a link there if you are interested in seeing a more detailed comparison between these two, between these resources and there are more, but the key idea is that there are more and more uh, trusted repositories for you to deposit your data in a, in a stable uh, location. Uh, and one thing I will not be monitoring the chat. Uh, so if you wanna jump in and, and uh, type something, if Grace, if you can let me know about the, the questions or, or just, uh, uh, I, raise your hand and I'll, I'll let you jump in uh, or, or unmute yourself. Uh, so in terms of the future for data sharing, um, so at, at least in economics, there's a big rise in terms of uh, use of administrative or proprietary data sets. Uh, this is good news in the sense that it gives us much better quality of a, a phenomena that, that previously was unobservable, but thinking of uh, uh, high incomes, for example, uh, analy uh, analyzing inequality with very high incomes and all sorts of other things. Uh, um, 
are, are examples that come to mind. Uh, and that, that's definitely a good news. It's a, sorry, it's a positive development, but it comes with the, with the challenge that, that, that work, it, um, by definition, uh, uh, very hard to reproduce. Uh, few people uh, have access to, to uh, these, these, ac these data sets. For example, in the US, there has been a, a whole research program around uh, using the IRS data set. And just to have an idea, uh, the total number of researchers that can access uh, that, that data set is around 140 uh, and past and present. So it's not, it's not that large. Um, and, and in addition to going so like against communism, co communalism and, and organized skepticism, like I think to me it's very salient that, that we need to, uh, 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 that this is the, the frontier in terms of uh, reproducibility. Uh, because we have seen sort of like high profile cases of fraud in, the, in Harvard and Duke, the, the research groups of Gino and, and Ariely. Uh, and we have been able to detect the, those cases of fraud because the data was available. Uh, so in, 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 in economics, at least, there's a large fraction of research for, for, for which we can not test this even. So we, we need to take it, uh, we need to... Basically, we cannot detect such irregularities, uh, and that's that's definitely a, the next frontier for for in terms of data sharing. In terms of uh, <clears throat> another frontier is data citations. There are more and more resources and protocols for how to cite the data. Um, in addition to citing the paper, you can cite the, the data set that was produced in a paper uh, as a valid unit of scholarly output, and and also another important uh, piece uh, of data sharing is uh, to document data provenance because a data set might have different fields that come from different data sets and at the same time it's good to uh, keep track of where all those different fields are coming both for to, to share the knowledge of how to access those data but also to give credit to the different uh, researchers who produce that, that the different parts of a data set and, and basically that, that's sort of like the big picture in terms of data sharing uh, now uh, I'm gonna switch gears into version control, uh, and and basically I'm gonna talk about uh, Git and GitHub. Uh, for as I said, for non-programmers, here I'm thinking of non-programmers as people who who whose their main to their full-time job is not programming. It, it, it is uh, doing research, uh, and and they use these tools as a secondary or as a complement for their for their work. Um, so uh, version control software, it's the, the general category here. It's an increasingly popular tool for computational reproducibility. Git, the, the, the software Git, it's, an, it's a type of version control software. Uh, and GitHub, uh, it's a company. There are different things that it's built on top of, of this software. Uh, both are very popular among programmers, but uh, until very recently, not so much among non-programmers. Uh, why? Uh, uh, I think that it has to do with graphical user interfaces or GUIs. Gra graphical user interfaces for most of us, uh, uh, a GUI is basically software in the sense that whatever you see in, in your computer, when you're navigating your browser, when you are uh, editing Word, when you're uh, doing anything, when you're basically interacting with the mouse or, or clicking things, uh, a software, it's sort of like mediating between you and the computer. Uh, they are behind, GUIs are behind the popularization of computers in the, in the early 80s. Uh, so they are fantastic. Uh, the, the problem is that they're not so good at uh, keeping records of the actions taken. So in a sense, they are a barrier for reproducibility. Um, what is not a GUI or a graphical user interface? Any software that runs in the command line. Uh, so the command line could be a terminal, the shell, bash, or however you want to call it. It looks something like this. Uh, Git is designed, Git, the software is designed to run on the command line. Um, and, and this is why the, one of the reasons why I think it's, it has been harder to adopt uh, outside of the programming community. Uh, and today we will learn Git without the command line. So this is the last time that you will see something like this in, in today's presentation. Um, uh, and and what does Git does? Git, Git is, a, is a software that it's designed to track the entire history of, a, of the code of a project. Uh, it's, a, as I said, designed originally for software development. 
and it has gained traction uh, in the research community. Uh, the, the main appeal of Git is that it facilitates full reproducibility and collaboration. Um, uh, as I, and as I said, it's uh, it's originally meant to work on 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 a on the command line or a non GUI software, but we can get like ninety percent of the features of Git without using the command line. So, uh, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, so, I said that Git tracks the entire history of code of a project. What do, I, what, do I, what do we understand by code? Code, it's any type of plain text file. So it could be a R script, a Stata script, even a LaTeX uh, file, tech file, a markdown file, TXT. CSV is a plain text file, but we're not gonna be thinking of using Git to track uh, data sets. Um, the, there are some features uh, of Git to, to track uh, data sets, but but no, they're not going to be the focus of, of this presentation today. We're focusing on, on, on using uh, Git to track code, uh, any type of plain text file. These type of plain text files are called um, human readable in the sense that the machine and the human see the same file. Non-human readable would be binary files that are basically a Word doc, a spreadsheet, a PDF, anything that what the humans sees and what the computer reads are different uh, files, uh, different versions of it. Um, Git can detect changes in binary files, but it cannot show you those changes. They, by showing you those changes might not be obvious what that is, but it will be by the end of, of this presentation. Um, so what is GitHub? Uh, GitHub is a company that for our purposes, it provides two services. Uh, one, it's a web hosting service uh, for all our files track uh, that, that we track with Git. Uh, it is it, it used to have a cost, but right now it basically it's 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 free, uh, especially for for academics. Um, the other service that it, that it, it provides for our purposes is a, a GUI, a graphical user interface software, which which is the GitHub Desktop app that provides a a, a user friendly access to Git. Um, and and. Even though this presentation is very sort of GitHub heavy, it, we, we're not sort of like advertising for GitHub. We, we, we're basically, uh, we want to emphasize that there are other services that, that, that do hosting, like Bitbucket, GitLab, or Kraken, and there are other GUIs that do the, the, the job of interacting with Git, like Source Tree, Git Kraken, and even Visual Studio Code and RStudio have features that allow you to interact with Git. Okay, so uh, the the um, <clears throat> the the goal for today, the, what what do we want to do in this in the, in the, le the next seventy minutes? Um, it's basically we want to uh, figure out a virtual control strategy uh, with, to keep track of any potentially meaningful modification of your code. Okay, that, that's the goal. That's what we're trying to do here. Uh, as a secondary goal, it, we're, we're gonna try to learn a little bit of how to collaborate with others using GitHub, uh, but, but we're gonna uh, focus on, on the primary goal. Uh, and given this goal of trying to keep track of any potentially meaningful modification of the code, if you have never heard of uh, version control software, um, this is a strategy that you could use, and it's a valid strategy. Basically, you could agree with your team and say something along the lines, okay, every time that somebody does a potentially meaningful modification of the code, uh, rename it uh, with this convention. You put the, the year, the month, the day, the file name, and the initials for, for who, was the was, the, who was the last to, to modify it. So you will start working uh, on any given day from the last state version, say something like this. And at the end of the day, if you are like very thorough and want to keep track of every single day, you would save a new file and have something like this. Okay. And this is a version control strategy. And it's, it's uh, this is sort of like what, what we're trying to improve upon. <clears throat> uh, the, the, the benefits of this strategy is that it's very easy to adopt. I just explained it to you in two minutes or something like that. The, the problems, 
if we think of what would be the challenges with this, it would be that it's it's very easy to make mistakes, uh, overwrite files, uh, something like, things like that. Whenever I rename a file, it's not clear at all what what happened between this and this. What what was the improvement? Um, so it's hard to document what changed between files. And also at the end of the day, you're going to have a ton of files per uh, each document. Uh, Fernando, so quickly, we yeah. have a comment um, or a question. Yes. Um, Pamela asked, more like collaboratively writing a manuscript. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and yeah, think of think of the manuscript as the code, kind of, uh, and and you're you're doing this type of renaming. Uh, uh, exactly, exactly the same thing. Uh, and and um, yeah. And the follow up is not sure definition of the code. Yeah, so the code, uh, the definition of code for now would be basically anything that is a plain text file. So there are many types of plain text. So the, think of the, 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 the quintessential version of a plain text file is this notepad uh, uh, extension that you, that you would open on a notepad, txt. But anything that you can uh, see just on, on, on uh, so like unformatted way uh, and, a, and a paper could be written on, on a plain text file, also in this extension and things like that. Uh, but, but and, and you could think of them as, as sort of like very closely tied together, but for now we're just gonna focus on, on, a, on a script, but it's a set of instructions that execute the, the data cleaning and the data analysis. Uh, yeah, and, and feel free to, to continue to jump in, Pamela, if you wanna follow up. In, and where we're here. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is strategy one for version control strategy, right? Uh, strategy number two would be uh, to use version control software. And this is what essentially what we're going to do. We're gonna start with a file. We're just gonna name it something, the file name. Uh, then we're gonna work on the file uh, or on a collection of files. We're gonna save every so often. Um, and once we think that we have done a potentially meaningful modification, we're going to take a snapshot of the entire working folder. Uh, that, that's going to be the, the action of, that we're going to do. Taking a snapshot, it's not completely clear right now what that is. It's going to be in 15 minutes or so. Uh, and our working session will update our entire working folder to the server or the cloud or something, something like that. And that this this... This is a high level description of how would you work using version control software, Git. Uh, uh, uh. And what are, what are the benefits of doing this? It's, it's that it's very, very hard to make a mistake, They'll overwrite something, delete something. It, you need to very consciously uh, so like, uh, go through many steps to delete some, something. Um, the documentation is integrated into the process and you will see what that means in a second. At the end, you have one file per document, and also you can see the differences across all versions. Uh, and it's meant to work on the cloud. It's meant to force us think that our computer is just sort of like an entry point to our work. Uh, and every day we, we can enter from any co given computer, download the, our scripts, uh, work on it during the day, uh, save it and send it back to, to the server or the cloud by the end of the day, and then start any other, the day after from a different computer, for example. The, the, the big the, the drawback of this is that it's somewhat harder to adopt because uh, it, it, it's a, it has the, the somewhat uh, three different steps that we're not used to, okay? Um, so, uh, and, and, and Pamela was, was pointing to this, so he, the, this, this is so like, uh, Git can, can help uh, <clears throat> uh, write a, a document collaboratively and avoid this type of situations. You can have a, uh, this is a, a, a comic that basically makes fun of the idea that do not ever uh, uh, name a file final.doc because then you will rename it and rename it and rename it. Uh, Pamela, please jump in. Yeah, thank you very much. This is so important because yeah, I, I have just a project I'm working across three sites and it's so important for me to keep track so that I don't confuse data coming from different places. But before we go to this point, I just wanted you to make it clear to me, 
when you use GitHub, it updates to the latest, like the last person who, who made a change in the document. But can you imagine me as maybe a PI? I want to find out what this person made a change from. And yet the, the document has already been updated to the current. How do I go back? Do I have a lot of those documents somewhere in the cloud that I can go back to? Do I have to keep the time that I last touched it so that I can keep track of what these people did while I was away yeah. and things like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lo lo love the question. It, that, so like the answer to this question will, will become uh, um, clear as we progress in the in the in the, the, the long answer to that question is that it will, the, 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 it will become clear as we progress in the tutorial. And hopefully by, by 40 minutes from now, hold me accountable if it's still unclear. Uh, but the, the short answer is that you will have one, one file and we'll like figure out ways on how to explore that one file, okay? Uh, so here, we're, we're, we're gonna try to avoid this situation, okay? And, and okay. just as a summary, yeah. As a summary, uh, we're, these are the two workflows that we're going to be comparing. So this is sort of like strategy number one, renaming. So say that you start with one, one file, uh, sample text, sample file.txt. And again, this could be a data, R script, whatever. And you save something. Then you save again. Then you save again. And then you're right here. And it's like, mm, this, this could be a potentially meaningful modification. Maybe I'm going to drop some substantial number of observations, modify variables in whatever way. So I, just to be safe, I'm gonna rename it and follow this, this convention. So I'm gonna put the date, the name of the file, and the extensions of, of the, the person who renamed it. Uh, then I'm gonna continue working, save again, save again, and then I'm gonna write and again to another uh, uh, point in time where I might suspect that there's a potentially meaningful modification and, and we'll have to rename maybe a different author we'll, or we'll, will put their initials there and with their date. So at the end of the day, what would you have with this strategy? You would have a history that tracks two steps, what happened here and what happened here. Uh, you, you would have three files, one, two, three. And, and, it, and again, it would be very hard to say like, where, where, where is that I dropped those observations? Where is that I modified that variable? It was it this file, this file, this file? So it, it can be much harder to, to track that, okay? The comparison is this, this uh, other workflow uh, that it looks like much cleaner, but it has the drawback that it has basically three weird steps that we're gonna, that the core of this uh, tutorial is to walk you through those weird steps such that by the end of it, they're less uh, uh, strange and, and you're more familiar uh, uh, doing it in your, in your workflow, okay? The first step is that instead of starting to work right away, you will have to sort of like to check on what's the status on the server or on the cloud. Say, okay, uh, I need to check out the latest version of the, or the working folder. Uh, uh, so, and the, the action of checking out the, the lingo for it is to call it, to pull it from, from, the, from the remote, from the server. <clears throat> uh, and that, so that's the first weird step. Then you start working as usual, just save, save, save. But at some point when you get to the potentially meaningful modification, you will take this snapshot. And, and the, instead of saying snapshot, we're, we're gonna call it a commit. And a commit is this action of, it's a bit circular for now, but it is the, it is the action of just recording everything that has happened up to this point, up to this commit in the entire working folder. Uh, so the, the, the first uh, uh, weird step is pulling. The, first, the second weird step is committing. Uh, uh, but uh, it, ideally you would get um, used to basically saving and committing almost simultaneously or, or, or uh, close to each other. You can skip some commits between saves, but try to commit often. And at the end of the day, instead of being done and going home, you will check in your work or push it back to the, to the, to the server. The, you will send it back to, to the, the, this shared uh, repository. Um, the, the benefit or the summary is that you will have a very thorough history and all this will become clear during the tutorial. You will have a history of what happened in step two, three, four, five, and six. You will not have a history of what happened in step one because you did not commit here. Um, you will have just one file and, and searching what, uh, what were the modifications across these files. It will be 
very easy and also searching for the documentation will be very easy. Uh, and this is basically what we're going to be focusing on, on for the for the for the demo. Okay. Other reasons to use Git and GitHub is that it's a great way to access a whole new world of knowledge. It's a great tool for collaboration, and it's easier to to test all sorts of ideas and models without losing your original work. It's very hard to it's like, as I said, to overwrite things without without knowing what you did. So. For the rest of the, the presentation now, I hope it will slow down. We will, uh, I, I, want, I would love for people to jump in uh, and, and follow through as much as possible, especially if you have errors or bugs, things are blocking you. Uh, I, I can guarantee you that there are others that are also having the same issue as you. So um, it would be fantastic if, if you can jump in uh, and, and tell us what's going on. So uh, we have three demos. Uh, I will spend a lot of time in the first one because that's sort of like the core. And then if we have time, we'll go over the other two. Uh, so first, let's begin just by all going to github.com uh, and, and uh, you will have your account sign in and you'll be there. So let me click here. And could somebody confirm that, that I'm showing the... Uh, that you can see my screen, page not found, of course. Uh, go to github.com, github.com. And if you just open an account, this is gonna be empty. And, and yeah, I, could, can somebody put like an okay on the chat or say something just to make sure that you're looking at the, the github.com stream? Yeah, it's visible. Great, yeah. okay. Uh, Okay, so the, this will be your your landing page. If first, if it's your first time opening this, you're gonna have um, nothing here and nothing here. Uh, on the on the left is it's gonna be the collection of your latest working folders. And working folders is a bit of a mouthful, and it's a bit uh, uh, or working folder projects. So instead of saying working folder projects, we're gonna call them repositories. And no, we're not even gonna call them repositories. We're gonna call them repos as a, as a part of their abbreviation. A repo is nothing but a glorified working folder. Remember that, okay? Uh, um, so these are gonna be all the collection of uh, working folder projects or repositories or repos. Uh, uh, the, the recent one that you have been working on, this is sort of like a social media or so, or like social network type of thing where you see what the people that you follow have done in their work and they, they share their, their progress. Uh, but in, in your case, if this is the first time, the only thing that I care is that up in the right, top right corner, you should see some icon there that shows that you have been signed in. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, that, 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 that's the only thing that we care for now. So before creating our own first repository, uh, I, I just wanna sort of like show you or walk you through like how amazing it's github to to explore knowledge in in this under this sort of like different mentality of, of instead of looking at the paper of the map of the of the unit of uh, scholarship we can now look at the entire uh, working folder or repository of, of our project uh, so here i there are some links of like these are somewhat old i have not updated them in a while but but there are papers, repositories for papers, repositories for courses, for the analysis and models that were used during the COVID pandemic and all sorts of other stuff. Uh, but for now, let, let me just click on, on one here. And this would be a repository. We're looking at our first repository. Um, and just to be clear, I click on the first one that says labor and I can put the link in the chat again if you... Um, don't have the slides. Uh, so what I'm looking at here, this is the name of the repository. That's the, the, the picture of the user, uh, of the owner of the repository. And here it says the, 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 the user name or handle of the, the owner. And this is the, the, the name of the repository. This that we see here is the working folder. So, and, and uh, one important thing is that Git and GitHub are mainly meant for you to see things, not meant to sort of like modify things. So we're gonna, we're gonna 
uh, see the materials and explore the materials in much more detail than what you will see with like, for example, a seed file or something like that. But don't think about mod modifying things here, okay? Uh, so this is the this is the replication files for a paper called Selective Migration, uh, Occupational Choice and Wage Returns to Common Majors. You can go into uh, the paper where it's the documentation, but also you could have the, the, the scripts. Uh, here it shows you the different R scripts. Um, and when you when you click on things, you go directly into the, if it's a plain text file, it will show you what's what's in the script. So you can inspect it online. You, you have not downloaded anything in your computer. You're just browsing things. So this is the the analog of like when I was in grad school, something like this would be so like to browse the author's web page. Now we are not going into the author's web page. We're going deeper than the manuscript, deeper than the than the zip file. We're getting into a script right away, and we can see it uh, and and share it and and comment it here. So, uh, for example, uh, one thing I could do is to say, "Hey, this line looks kind of interesting." I'll comment it to to my co-authors or my team, I'll say, I'll create a, a link here, put it in the chat and say, can you guys take a look at this line? And if you go and click on that link, it will take you directly to that line in the code. So it's it's uh, uh, it's, a, it's sort of like a different way of exploring um, uh, materials. And th this is just sort of like a brief exposition of, for you to be, for you to gain some familiarity of what a repository is. So we have looked at this author's repository uh, and and then so like take a step back and, and say where well, there are more and more repositories for many papers, but also you can take a look at the entire course materials. The 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 to me the game changer was during the pandemic where this so like this big uh, micro simulation models uh, of of uh, spread of uh, contagious uh, were deposited on GitHub and everybody could look at them. Also, the, the, the newspapers took a, a pivotal approach where they start showing the code of how they build the, these uh, visualizations. So the, the Economist, the New York Times, have, a, a, have you, can, you can click here and you, you see, so for example, people are gonna get so like PTSD from this thing, but, but the, this figure that we all remember, it can be reproduced from this, a repository. So again, a whole new way of accessing knowledge uh, that even if you're not going to remember what is Git or what is uh, uh, what comes after this in this tutorial, just take away that now you can access uh, knowledge in a, in, a, in a whole new way. Pamela, please jump in. Yeah, um, thank you for opening uh, that file that you opened first, but I really do want you to also open another file, like for example, yeah. the last when you opened on on coronavirus and then i want you to to show me how you also make uh, comments on something there yeah so this um uh, uh, great point so here this here we're looking at somebody else's work uh, somebody else's repository uh, so this is this somebody this is the user the person or the institution this is the working folder the repository uh, <clears throat> and and uh, so, uh, so here would be some. Uh, the, or let, let's look at uh, this uh, this version. So here would be a, a plain text file. Think of this as a script. Uh, we cannot edit this because it's it's still somebody else's. Uh, and and then and, and again, GitHub uh, and Git are meant for you for us to look at things. Uh, not so much at editing. So we're in in the, I, I love how you're like very close to what comes uh, right after. But in in a few slides, we're gonna start doing our own edits. Um, uh, but one thing you can do uh, as, an, as just as a repeat, you can uh, share this information. Uh, uh, you can share the link uh, of the, the 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 file. You can share the link to a line in the file, uh, and you can do many more things that we'll explore uh, as we progress. Okay, uh, and we'll in in okay. the next okay. in the next. Uh, uh, so yeah, so actually this, this is a great segue. So we were looking at this repository from this researcher Tyler Tyler, 
and some uh, um, and we we want to start playing with it. We very recently, like Pamela, we want to we want to move things around and, and play with the code and comment on things. But this is this person's repo. So if we want to create a copy of this repo for ours, the action of creating a copy uh, of a repository uh, from somebody else's into our uh, account, into our GitHub account, is called forking. And uh, if you click on there, on fork, uh, you will, uh, I think I have already forked this, so, um, yeah. but you will get something like this. Uh, and then you click on create fork. Let me, let me see, if, so I already have that. Uh, okay, I'll put it here. Uh, create fork. And after I create the fork, do, 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 it's sort of like creating the copy. So right now we're just gonna wait a little bit. And now after forking, it looks like nothing has happened. So it's kind of strange, but something substantially has, substantial has happened in the sense that here's the repository, uh, here's the, the, the source where it's coming from, but now the owner of this version of the fork, it's bits. We took that entire working folder and we can basically take it from there, keeping the, the link and acknowledging where it's coming from, but basically we can start modifying and doing whatever we want to this working folder and we're not gonna affect the original uh, if, we, if we don't want. If we want, there are ways to, to, to connect. But if you wanna start so like editing things uh, or, or more actively playing around with, the, with a repro reproduction package, uh, you will fork the repository, somebody else's repository, and it will come to your account. Hi, Fernando. So, One more yes. question um, in yes. the chat. What is the difference between fork and clone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, so we just created a copy of a, of a repository from somebody else's account to ours. That will be forking. Uh, cloning is what we're going to do exactly next. <laughs> so when, uh, no, no, not next. Uh, in the, Second to next step. Um, but cloning is the action of uh, taking a repository that is in our account uh, and bringing it in our account in the in the uh, remote in the in, in github.com and bringing it to our local machine. Cloning a repository is the action of bringing a repository to your local machine. Okay, and we'll do cloning as you see in the, the uh, <coughs> very soon. But first. Uh, I want you all to create your own very first own repository. Start from scratch and create your first uh, own repository. Uh, and what we will do is that oop, we'll be here. So you were here. Um, you can go uh, back to the main uh, page of github.com um, uh, by either clicking there or where, or you can also click on that plus. But for now, I'll just go to the uh, to the landing page, you'll be here. And it, for to start a new repository, you have that bottom there, that plus. There are many, many ways to click and create a new repository. But I'll start here. And here it's telling me, okay, you wanna create a repository? It's gonna be under this user. Uh, that'll be my handle. I'll create the test one, two, three, four, no, uh, one, two, two. Uh, uh, you can put a one line description of what that repository is. You can start as pri private or public. It doesn't matter. You can switch uh, uh, from pri private to public um, as you as you progress. Um, I'll, I'll just stay public for now. There's not going to be anything there. Uh, and I will ask every every one of you to to click on add a readme file. Um, you basically we're going to start with a. a Rep with a repository, a repo, uh, which is a working folder uh, that uh, contains only one file, the only one visible file, the 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 readme file that's going to be almost empty. Uh, there are going to be these other options that we're not going to touch upon now, uh, but I, if I have time, I'll mention it at the end. Uh, but for now, I'll just like for everybody, just to click here and click on create repository. Uh, and after you click on create repository, again, you'll have your username, your 
repository. And this is the, the readme file. Uh, it, this, this is the part that I want you to focus, that this, like this area right there. This is showing you there's this one file that is a plain text file, uh, extension MD. You might be uh, used to the extension TXT as a plain text file, but MD, it's a similar, uh, uh, um, it's similar to TXT in the sense that it's uh, plain text, but it has the virtue that it can be uh, outputted into many formats, it's called a markdown file. So we click here and we just see it in plain text form. This is what's in that file. It's just the one line that there's one hash and then the name of the repository. That, that's all that what's in our repository for now, okay? Uh, what we're seeing here, down here, it's a nice feature of uh, github.com uh, that, that GitHub it basically has a feature that it looks into any repository and if, if it finds a readme.md file, it will render it, it will output it in, in a format uh, that it's a, a, like a mini uh, web page, like a mini, it, it will render it in HTML, HTML format. Uh, but again, the key idea is that it is one file and it's, uh, it's a plain text file, okay? So we are here. We have created our first repository and initiated the readme file. Uh, and we're not gonna make some edits just yet uh, because there was this question about cloning. So now the next step uh, is that we're gonna clone the, this repository. Uh, so, okay, we, we have created this, it's up in the web. Nothing of, like this is in our computer yet. <laughs> so uh, we wanna bring it to our computer and, and if, uh, if you wanna say that you were looking at the repository from the, the, the completed repository from before, uh, from this other researcher or from the New York Times or whatever, and you wanna bring it to your computer, uh, you can, there are two ways of doing that. You can download it as a zip file and it will basically be the same thing as downloading it from Dropbox or something like that. And you will, uh, you will just download, download a zip file that will be completely disconnected from the GitHub. So if you're not gonna remember anything other than this, and you wanna still interact with GitHub, a good way to interact with it is just find the repository and download it as it. If you wanna continue progressing with this, uh, you, will, you will clone it. And the action of cloning it, uh, is what happens when you click here in open with GitHub desktop. So if you click here, you start with the green and click on opening with GitHub desktop, <clears throat> it's gonna open up the, the GitHub um, uh, desktop app um, uh, and it, it might ask you to sign in the first time if you have not signed in to a GitHub desktop app. Uh, but after you have signed in, uh, you will have um, um, the, this, this uh, uh, landing uh, menu where it says, do you wanna clone this repository? And probably this is too little, Maybe it's small for people to see. Yeah. Uh, do you want to clone this repository that is up in the web into your computer? And this is the, the path where I have it clone uh, my repositories for now. Okay. Um, are they, uh, any of you uh, getting uh, stuck with the, with, the, with the credentials part? Uh, is, is anybody stuck? Basically, don't don't seeing this because because the credentials are not working. Okay, so if if everybody is looking at this, then we're gonna proceed. Or what's this, Pamela? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Pamela, if, if you can unmute yourself, could you uh, do do you have the GitHub Desktop app installed? No, I don't. I tr I've tried, but just moving um, past. Yeah, yeah. No, no worries. No worries. Uh, no worries. So, so this, this yeah. is what we're gonna do. So, given given that the, the app is not installed, you're gonna have to follow basically my exposition. And and if we okay. were in, in 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 the physical version here, we would just pair up. This happens all the time. So we'll just pair up different people, and 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 you will follow somebody else's, but follow mine for now. But Please okay. feel free to continue to jump in and say like, hey, that step's not fully clear. There's also gonna be a recording okay. of this later on, so you can, you can uh, 
check uh, check again. But but for those who have the D GitHub Desktop app installed, uh, uh, are, are, is anybody having some credential issues? Okay, so <clears throat> I'm gonna proceed with this, and and just as a reminder, so we are here. First way to interact, download a zip and forget about anything I'm gonna talk about this, but lose all the the, 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 the features from uh, Git and GitHub, but you can still use it, uh, or clone. And to clone, you open with GitHub. So you click here, it's gonna take you here, and you're gonna clone the repository. Once you clone it, you're looking for the first time at the GitHub desktop app. <coughs> and the GitHub desktop app, similar to GitHub, it's not meant to edit things. It's meant for you to see how things change and to keep track of how things are changing, okay? So nothing has changed yet. So in this changes tab, you're not seeing anything. Uh, uh, and by default, it's gonna, the, here you're looking at your repository, right there, You that upper top left corner is showing you that you're looking at this repository. Um, if you click on showing Explorer or Finder here, it's gonna show you where it is. And as you see, there's just the one file, the readme.md. <clears throat> and, uh, and this is a plain text file, as, as I said, and, and you can open this with Notepad, with, uh, you can open it with any uh, text editor, the Stata do file, the R Studio, or, or anything. Uh, um, I use this Visual Studio code, um, that has some nice feature, but it, it, this is a text editor. So I, I don't want you to get so like overwhelmed by this, uh, by this thing. So you can also open it, where's this? Doo -doo. Uh, for example, say that you have R or you have Stata or Notepad, uh, you would open it in R Studio, and here's gonna be your plain text file. <clears throat> uh, and now, this, Sorry that I've gone like very, very slow, but 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 uh, we have gone through the steps of A, creating your first repository, B, cloning your repository, and now C, we're gonna start editing uh, your repository, which is essentially basically doing the work, doing the work of writing a script, analyzing data, writing a manuscript, whatever it is. Here's where, where we're gonna sort of like simulate that, that, that part of the exercise. So you would start um, here by, writing a, some uh, some instructions and in a very creative way I'm just gonna say writing writing my first line this could be a like regression or or, or cleaning up or using or cleaning whatever first line in the code um, uh, and I have not saved I have not click save this thing shows that I have not saved here. Let me zoom in so it's bigger for everybody. Uh, this is, let me, uh, okay. <clears throat> um, so I'm not saved. Um, and so I will just switch to a GitHub desktop app and I will encourage you to do so. I look at the GitHub desktop app. Nothing has changed because following this, this workflow here, this I have not even saved, okay? So I'm kind of like here. Uh, so now I'm gonna go here and now I'm gonna save. And after I save, I'm gonna look at the GitHub desktop app again. And now it's gonna tell me, hey, you have added something. Uh, for some reason, it's, it's, it's uh, thinking that I deleted the first line and then I added it again. That's okay. But the important part is that here, it's showing me that I have added a line and it's showing me what line has been added. Okay, <clears throat> so here the, the app is telling me, hey, this is, these are the things that have changed. Uh, and now basically we are at this step. We have saved something, we're here. Uh, but say that we, we add a second line or we, it could be 20 lines. It could be, this is just uh, pretending that we're, we're running some analysis. So very creative, adding a second line. Um, I will save and now it's saying, okay, you have added something else. So 
let's assume that we, we have done something potentially meaningful and we want to keep track of it. And so like, we're going to take our first snapshot. Basically, it's, we're going to take a snapshot of the entire working folder. If we want to exclude some files, we will just unclick them here. Here's going to, we're going to see the collection of files where we're going to see this. And to do this snapshot or, or the commit, uh, to, to do the action of the commit, we always need to leave a very short, like two or three word description of what happened here in the title. This, this longer description is optional, but and in this case, if there's just one file that has been modified and it's pre-populating it with a, with a message, but um, for now I'll say my first commit in uh, my local computer. And I'll put commit to main. And what has happened is that I basically I am moving here along this along this path. So I have saved and commit. And if I look at the GitHub desktop app, uh, in the changes, it's showing me there are no changes. You, you, why? Because it is it's tracking what has happened since the last commit and nothing else has happened. If I go to history. I can see that there are two commits. One, when I when I created the the repository online, this is the first commit. This was done on on GitHub.com, uh, and the second commit is the one that I just did. That basically says, ah, you deleted that line, added it again, and added two more lines. That that's what it's telling me. And it, this it would give me this level of detail for any plain text file. Uh, if, if this were to be a binary file, a, a doc file or a spreadsheet or something, it will say something has changed, but it will not show me the, the, the changes, okay? And as you see in, this, in these messages is where I'm starting to so like seamlessly integrate the, the documentation. Uh, so, and um, any, anybody having trouble uh, committing or finding where, where the, the, the commit is, where are the changes, but, and, yeah. Somebody has some some uh, issues that they would like to share. And remember, this this is helpful for for your colleagues too. If you got lost, uh... okay. So free to jump in, okay? Um, so. Here uh, now we're gonna we're gonna uh, go here. We have added a few lines. Remember, this is we're pretending that this is a, a R script or a do file or something like that. Um, and now we're gonna say, okay, you you uh, third third line uh, and um, uh, I'll I'll save. Uh, then I'll I'll modify, for example, the second add a uh, I'll add a modification to a second line with some modification. I'll save again, and I'll look at the. Uh, I'll encourage you to go through these steps just to become familiar with it, and then you will look at okay, what's what's uh, Git tracking here and what what's the GitHub desktop app showing us that Git is doing. It's telling us, hey, since the last commit, you added this third line, but also this second line, you deleted it and replaced it with something with a modification. Okay, so it's tracking what's happening between uh, between uh, commits, not between states, between commits. Uh, so now I'll commit a, I'll Commit again, I'll call this my uh, second commit on computer. Um, and essentially what I'm doing is I'm moving here to, 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 I'm doing this, this exercise, okay? And now that I'm, sorry, assuming that I'm done for the morning, I've done finish uh, or an important part of my work that I would like for my colleagues to see or, <clears throat> something like that. Now, what I will do now is I will push it back to the remote repository. And if we are here, this is the remote repository. I'm gonna refresh just to show you 
that that it has not changed. So this is this is exactly the same that we have uh, before, and we're, now we are starting to see uh, that that I don't know if you can see my my video my face here, but but the the, the, the key idea is that we're sort of like advancing in, in paths, and and now the the uh, the remote is somewhat behind, and the local repository, the one that's in our computer, is sort of like moving ahead. So they are sort of like somewhat out of sync. They're out of sync. Uh, and and when we push, we're going to get them in sync again. That's what we're going to do now. Uh, so don't uh, don't worry about connecting your GitHub desktop and our studio. Don't. It, the only it, the only reason why I'm using our studio here is just to show you, um, show you. Uh, there, there was a question in the chat, sorry, about the, the connection between our studio and and GitHub. Uh, the, I'm only using our studio here as a text editor, so it that doesn't have to be connected. What what has to happen is that after you save your file here, the GitHub desktop app should show you changes in the file. If you have not saved the file, the, 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 the GitHub desktop is not gonna show you any files, any changes. But once you save in the file that comes from the repository, it, it should show it in there. Um, Maybe, okay. uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's easy if you just try to do a quick say, like if you can demonstrate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, so for example, here, here, nothing has changed, right? So uh, if I type things here, fourth line uh, of creativity, because uh, I don't know how to invent things on the fly. So uh, I have not saved. So I have not clicked on save, okay? Uh, if I go here, nothing has changed. But if I click on save and I go here, nope, I go here, <clears throat> it's gonna, there's going to show me a changes. And if I want to take the snapshot, then I will do the, the, the I'll type in the, in this case, the commit. And here I am going to use the, the, the pre-populated message and just say, click to commit to main. Sometimes there might not be a pre-populated message and you have, just have to type something. If, at some point you will get tired and start typing some gibberish if you want to just send it up there quickly. But for now, I'll just use the pre-populated version. It's going to be committed. <clears throat> and that's, that, that's those are gonna basically gonna be the the steps. Um, um, okay, so now, uh, as I said, the local version is somewhat ahead than the than the than the, uh, the, the than the than this version than the um, than the remote version in in, in GitHub.com. Um, so we are gonna do our first push. Uh, so like here, we're gonna so like end our micro working session, I, one hour of work, something like that, something like that and then we're gonna <clears throat> push it. And here, uh, Git had the stop up nicely. So like uh, uh, show us what was so like the next logical step and we'll click on push to origin. Origin is where, where this thing is coming from. Uh, but if, if for some reason it's not here, you will see it. You can click here, push, or in help, push, and you will always find it somewhere on here. Uh, uh, quick question yes. in the chat. Um, what are yes. the advantages of committing and pushing with GitHub desktop rather than directly in our studio? Yes. So uh, to to using our stu to to use our studio, uh, we need to connect it with our studio, and that's sort of like an extra step that I have not done in this tutorial because it, it is so like prone to errors and it, it is uh, like uh, Git has, uh, just for context, our, our studio has a feature, even though our studio is meant to edit code, it has a feature that it, it you can push and pull. Uh, but to do that connection, it requires a few extra steps uh, and, and, and basically I, I do not want it to integrate it with this tutorial. And also uh, the, the GitHub desktop app is so like, it's sort of like uh, very robust to operate with this. Sometimes I, in, in the past, in my experience has been that, that 
that are, that our studios will disconnect from GitHub. Also, uh, I'm editing things that might not be on our studio, and I want them to to send them. So I I, I tend to use the GitHub desktop app as sort of like the center uh, place to send um, to to push things around. Okay, so now we're gonna do our first push, push, and I'm gonna go to the thing. Let me close a few things. So here we are, and nothing has happened. Kind of disappointing, but we need to refresh. So I'm going to refresh. And here we see our edits. And we see them kind of in a, in a strange way. Uh, this is because uh, mark, when Markdown is rendered, it, it, it does, uh, it, it has one quick uh, 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 rule that I'll explain in a second. But for now, if we look at the raw file, click on the readme file and click on raw or encode or whatever option, you will see this is exactly the, tech, the file that we have in our computer, okay? Uh, uh, and basically this, this is, uh, um, now we are, uh, um, Pamela, I think it was your question at the very beginning, like how do we start editing things? This is how we will be editing things. So we, we will edit our, we'll edit our script here, uh, modify things, commit, save, commit, save, push it. And once we push it, then we can start uh, sharing it and send an update to our, to our collaborators and say, hey, can you check what, what was the last thing I modified? You can be super precise and say like, hey, here's a, I modified this line, can you take a look? Um, uh, but um, you can also tag your collaborators when you're pushing things. Uh, and, uh, but sorry, I'm getting a little bit ahead. In the collaboration part, it's the, the second demo, but uh, yes, we're, we're getting started into the, the, the world of, of uh, taking advantage of, of uh, Git and GitHub. Um, so back to the repository. Um, let's use this, this quirk feature of a markdown file uh, just to, uh, to, as an excuse to modify the file even farther. Uh, the, the, the quirk feature and this, if you don't care about it, don't worry. Uh, markdown files, as I said, are plain text files that can be outputted in different formats. In this case, this is an HTML format. Uh, but the, the one weird thing, my, the, 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 Markdown is fantastic in the sense that it's super simple and you can look up like Google Markdown syntax and there are a ton of um, uh, tutorials that are like two minute tutorials that show you how to do this. And it's, it's very uh, intuitive. But the one weird thing is that the, the space, when there's a line break, uh, you need to have two spaces for, for the, for make sure to make sure that in any format, the line break will be interpreted as a line break. So what do I mean by that? Uh, uh, so in Markdown, uh, if I to make sure that there's a line break here, I need to type two times, two, two spaces, one, two. Here, one, two, one, two. Here there's no line, but I'll put two spaces anyway. So I have just added two spaces to each line. It, if I look at the file just with my eyes, it doesn't seem that I have done much. But if I save, and then I go to the GitHub desktop app, it's going to say, hey, you have added these spaces here. All right? So it's, again, showing you sort of like the, the power to track even very slight changes. So I'll, I'll um, and I made these modifications in my local computer, right? So this. This and this again are so sort of like out of sync. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I, I have done the modifications. The next step is that I'm going to save. I just, I click save, yeah, I, I save. Then I'm gonna commit and say, added the two spaces for MD. Uh, commit. We're still in, in the local computer. And now I'm gonna push it back to the to remote just to illustrate how, how this thing looks um, quickly. 
my headphones are gonna run out of battery, so let me. Uh, so I'm here. Um, okay, so we were here. Now I'm gonna refresh. And after I refresh, you see that that there are the lines. And and as you see somewhere in here, I forgot to add space. Maybe because it had, when when you in our studio when you add a to space, it puts that point. So basically, looking at here, just to make sure I'll put an extra, just put more spaces and pro repeat the same procedure, go here. I'll, now I'll just use the pre-populated version, push, and, and take a look here. Refresh, and here it is uh, in a, if you look at the raw file, um, again, it doesn't seem that much that anything has changed on that dot, but we have added these spaces. And given that we have added these spaces, now the, the automatic feature where it renders the, the readme file, it, it works and it shows us the, the readme file in a nice format. Um, Another question that was also at the beginning of the, the tutorial, so like hinting out what, what, what do we wanna do with this? And let me let me see how I'm doing on. Okay, so we have done clone, committing, pushing, pulling. Um, uh, we have done uh, this, okay. Um, uh, so be, be, before, before I move to, to the, the last piece of this demo, uh, it would be fantastic if somebody is having some issues with the pushing and pulling uh, and wants to jump in just to share uh, and and uh, so others can, can learn. Um, okay, so uh, now let's basically let's move to the the last uh, and very important part of, of the, the first tutorial um, is that okay so we have done all this committing we have doing all this effort basically to to keep track of the history of our work so if we look at the github desktop app there's a history here and we can see everything that has happened initial commit first commit second commit and it's showing uh, showing us everything that has happened on each step and and GitHub Desktop has some features to navigate the history. Git Git the soft just the Git Git the software that runs in the command line has a ton of features to navigate the history of, of what it has been done. For people like me who are not so into the command line uh, and, and just want to navigate the history and go back to previous versions, I'll show you a very sorry, simple uh, uh, Primitive way, if you wanna, if you wanna, if you wanna say it, but it works well uh, in terms of navigating the history of, of the project. So, in your repository, if you wanna look at the history, you will click here, and it says six commits on, on the clock. And here's showing you all the 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 commits. And as you see, here's the documentation, right? So the documentation was seamless, seamlessly integrated here. And you will say like, ah, you know what? I really like that second version of my of my script. And I, I, I this is what, and let's assume that I added 300 lines and I deleted 200 lines. So this, it's not gonna work to just copy and paste. So basically the question is how do I access this file at that point in time? Uh, right now you're looking at that commit. If you click on browse files, you will be looking at the repository at that point in time. This is the repository. Everything is the same except that little thing there that shows that you are in, in, a, in a specific point in time. And as you see here, uh, the, this, this point in time has not incorporated the, the, the versions that we just modified. So say that I wanna access this, here is where I will basically use this idea of downloading a zip because they are completely disconnected. So I will just take this, the repository or the file uh, from the repository. 
And here, the, this is the repository at that point in time in my computer. And if I open it uh, here, this is the file with the latest changes. This is the file at that point in time. So I, can, I could go back in time and inspect everything that has happened. Uh, first, the, the first step would be uh, when I'm looking at here, so like checking out where the differences are with the, with the visual tool to see the additions and subtractions. And then the, the second step would be browse files, either download the specific file or download the entire repository and copying and pasting the, the sections that you need. And again, that this is like a very uh, simple workaround. Uh, the, the, one of the, so like the core features of, of Git, which is like accessing specific uh, versions and specific times. But this is what I found works for me. And, and it, it gets you a lot of the features uh, of, of version control. Any questions about this last step on the, on the first tutorial, in the first demo? Okay, so, um, and, and here we're in this um, point in time, if we wanna go to the latest version in time, you need to click on the repository and make sure that it says main, and then that way you're gonna be back in, in time where, where you should be, okay? And, and this, I, I know I went extremely slow on this one, uh, but this is sort of like the core of what entails to use a, uh, uh, Git and GitHub. And uh, I've used a ton of lingo, this committing, pushing, pulling, cloning, all that stuff. Here I put a link with a with a handout for you to just remember what those things are because if you're like me, you're gonna forget. Um, but that the, if you got this, to, this, this, this demo, I'm very happy uh, and uh, you, you have basically all the tools you need to, to use uh, GitHub um, in your own work. And this, this is just a review of all the things that we just did. <clears throat> so now, uh, with the last fifteen minutes, we're gonna we're gonna do uh, oh, less than fifteen minutes. With the last eleven minutes, we're gonna um, do uh, a little bit of collaborations uh, or, or simulate a collaboration. Uh, and basically, when you collaborate on on GitHub, uh, there are two approaches. One is with many owners, where basically everybody owns the same repository and everybody can push and you just need to um, notify your colleagues when you're pushing uh, and send them updates. Uh, that This is the, the, the approach that I use uh, mainly on, on my work uh, and it works pretty well. This other, this other approach, which is very popular, especially for open source software and other things, is to, that there's one person that controls the repository and, and people requests that their modifications being pulled into their into the repository and that's called a pull request uh, we're not going to cover it today but but it is it is um uh, it has uh, many similarities with with the approach here above um and it's fantastic for for like open source software um so let's go with the many owners approach uh, and, and given that we're not in a, in a physical environment i cannot put you in pairs the 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 we're gonna, we're gonna. Uh, ah, my headphones. Uh, can you hear me? My my headphones just died. Yep. Yep. Great. Okay. Uh, so um, so let's just pretend that you are two individuals for a second. Uh, uh, the one that's working on your computer, we're gonna call it you you, and there, there's gonna be an alter ego working on a on a different computer, and that different computer is going to become clear what I mean by that in a second, and that's going to be alter you, okay? Uh, and uh, I, I have said that, that the GitHub app and the GitHub and github.com are mainly for, for looking at changes, not for editing things, but you can edit things. And only for the purpose of this section of the exercise, I will show you how to edit it, but I will not recommend you to be editing frequently. The <clears throat> We will be editing the rem, the on, on github.com, pretending that we are on a different computer and pushing to github.com, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. You, you, in your computer, you're gonna do edits and commits, but you're not gonna push, okay? So, uh, uh, so we are here, no changes. If you have any changes, before you start working on this, 
If you have any changes, commit them, push them, and start with, with empty changes. So go to uh, your script and start adding lines. So add uh four, no. Oh, so this is this is the this is the file that was from the previous history. So I should be, I'm not gonna save this. This is the one that we're working. So this is the the latest version. So I'm gonna add a fifth line in my local computer. Let's say by Mimi. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna save. I'm gonna look at the GitHub desktop app and it's there, okay? I'm gonna commit, but I'm not gonna push. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, adding changes made by me, me, okay? I haven't pushed. Um, so here's the remote, here's the, the, the local machine, the, the local machine's slightly ahead and I have not pushed it yet, okay? <clears throat> so now I'm gonna go, we're gonna pretend that we are the outer you, the outer ego that has, that is in a different computer. And what do I mean by a different computer? It's just, imagine that it's in a different computer and it's pushing things to the web and they're, 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 they're being modified here. And uh, how do we do that? We, we can click on this pencil here and, <clears throat> um, and um, now I'm gonna I'm gonna do something that I'm gonna edit and, and for for the first time I'm gonna I'm not gonna edit the a new line. I'm gonna edit the a line where I am at. So I'm in the fourth line. I'm in this fourth line and, and say, I'm gonna say adding modifications from other collaborator. Outer me. Okay. And and if I if I were to do this in a in a in a different computer, the actions would be the same. So I edit, save, commit, push. But when you do it on, on, on the web, everything's condensed in one step when you click commit changes. Basically, it's saving, committing, and pushing. And we'll just commit changes and we'll say from alter me. Okay. So um okay, so if we look at the repository, the, the remote version went in one direction, the local version went in a different direction. Uh, <clears throat> and this one has some edits that the other one doesn't and vice versa, okay? And for the first uh, version of this exercise, basically I, I, I edit in different lines. So now I will ask you to go back to the GitHub desktop app and say, okay, now I'm gonna push. I'm gonna, I have not talked with my collaborators uh, I uh, I just made some edits <clears throat> and I'm gonna push to a latest version. After you push, uh, the GitHub desktop app is gonna say, hey, there are some changes you need to fetch. Fetch is the action <clears throat> of basically checking what's up with the with the remote. Nothing else happens. It's just so sort of like checking if they are in sync. So you're gonna fetch and it's gonna say, hey, you need to pull before you push. So pull. And if you pull, ah, wait, I got I got uh, a conflict anyway. <clears throat> Sometimes when you when you when you most of the time uh, when you modify different lines, you don't get a conflict. But it, given that we have so little time, it's I think it's a good idea that we get a conflict right away. Uh, uh, so in a in 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 most cases, if the edits are in different lines and I have not messed up anything with the spaces, the the it's gonna be merged automatically and it's gonna combine both versions. <clears throat> In this case, it's telling me, hey, there's a there's a conflict. And and if you have some something like Visual Studio code or something like that, something else to, to, to see nicely how those changes are taking place, you can use it. But if not, you can go to the plain text editor of choice that you have 
And if you go look at your, your, your code, your script, you're going to see something weird. So let's go look at the script. <clears throat> so here is telling us there's this version in, in, in your local computer where this, this is how the, 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 the fourth and fifth line look. And there's this version in your, in your remote computer. And this is how the, the two versions look. And the way to resolve conflicts, if you're if you're using something like Visual Studio or, or other tools, it can tell you like um, choose this version, choose that version, combine both, uh, and address it with one click. You can also here say use the one from main and origin. <clears throat> I always forget which and which, uh, but here the the head. I think it's the origin. So, um, uh, so if I click this, it would just select this version and it would delete this version. But it, these are all only so like added tools. The only thing that you need to do is to, if you want to address this manually, you you just need to delete these weird symbols and keep the section that you want. You can keep this one. You can keep this one. You can keep a combined version. But for now, I'm just going to keep this version. I'm going to save. And after I save, it's going to say that the it's going to say that the, the conflicts have been addressed. So continue with merge. And it has been addressed in the local computer. And then I'm going to push them to a remote. And after I push them, both are going to be in sync with the, with the latest version. And everything that happened, <clears throat> every step that took place, it's tracked here, so I can go back to whatever version I would prefer in the past. With one minute left, <laughs> let me give you the, the <clears throat> one last important tip. Many times you will have uh, conflicts uh, of, of mer merge conflicts that are not so easy to address. It's like, oh, what happened here? I have no idea. You're going to get all these errors that you're going to feel very frustrated and, and it's going to feel like this thing is broken and not working for you. There's one very good advice from uh, Jenny Bryan in, in, in a tutorial that she has on, on GitHub is basically keep calm and just burn everything down. What what do we mean? What do we mean by that? Is that go to your local computer and remember everything is stored on on the web remotely on the server. So stop thinking of your computer as sort of like the main repository of of, of the information. And um, so here's the repository. No. It's not the repository. It's called test something. Test that one. This is the repository. So uh, say that there are some conflicts. I just go here and delete the whole thing. Burn it down in the local computer. It's very hard to delete things in the remote. So don't, don't worry about that. Uh, so if I go to a GitHub desktop app, it's going to say, I cannot find it. And just clone again. And it's going to bring the latest version from the remote. What, what are you going to lose? You're going to lose the latest changes that you did in your local computer. If you don't want to lose those changes, the other the, the strategy that you do is that, where's this thing? Um, strategy that you do is that you just uh, rename it instead of deleting it. So old, you rename it. It's going to disappear from here. You clone the latest version. And now you're going to have, this is the one that's coming from the web. And this is the one that was in your computer. And then you start moving sort of like one file by one and try to figure out where the conflict is. And that way you're, you're going to minimize the losses from any potential merge conflicts. And with that, uh, I'm going to stop because um, that, that's it. And the last, the, the last demo, demo was using branches, which is fantastic and something I would encourage you to explore. But, but the core of this is, is we, we have covered it. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention, there are more tutorials here and some links for you to take, take a look. And these are dated uh, profiles, but it, uh, again, with this idea of exploring sort of like the, the, the world of knowledge in a different way, go check out these people's profiles or, or these organizations, and you can sort of like see in much more depth the, 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 the amount uh, of work and, 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 and like the entire iceberg of their, of their production. And sorry for going one minute over. Thank you. Thanks so much, Fernando. And 
uh, don't worry if you didn't catch all of that. Again, we'll be sharing the slides and the recording, um, as well as, you know, on our BITS YouTube page, we have longer or different uh, trainings for this as well. So there's a lot of materials for you to explore um, and we'll we'll share that um, afterwards with everybody. So thanks for joining. We have one more session in a couple of weeks. Um, you should have been able to register for it when you registered for this session, but just in case you lost the link, I put it back in the chat um, and we hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks for spending your time with us this morning. Take care. Thank you, bye.